a woman is discovered bludgeoned to death. It is one of the most famous murder cases of the 20th century that inspires the TV series The Fugitive. Early morning, July 4th, 1954, police respond to a panicked phone call from a wealthy suburb of Cleveland, Ohio. The call has come from the home of a young physician, Dr. Sam Shepard. Inside a gruesome murder scene, Shepard's young wife, Marilyn, beaten to a pulp. Sam and Marilyn Shepard's only son, Sam Jr., was seven years old when his mother was murdered. He was in the next room. My recollection is just being awakened by two adults in my bedroom. A policeman stood and blocked my view into the murder room, fortunately. I never saw that. And they took me down the stairs and out the front door. On the threshold of that door, somehow, I felt my universe had been chipped upside down. There was this moment in my life that I knew everything was lost. The seven-year-old boy has seen and heard nothing. Police need to talk to his father, Dr. Shepard, to get his story. Two experienced homicide detectives are summoned from Cleveland. The coroner has already removed Marilyn's body. He tells them that Dr. Shepard is not at home, but in hospital with serious injuries. Dr. Shepard, we just came from your house. We had a look around and uh, why don't you tell us exactly what happened last night? We had the uh, herds over for supper. Um, it was a lovely evening. Dr. Sam Shepard gives the first version of the events, launching one of the most famous and complex murder investigations ever. Finished eating around 8.30. And then we moved to the sitting room to watch a movie on television. Marilyn sat on my lap for a bit before I moved to the sofa to have a snooze. Around 4.30 a.m., the sleeping shepherd is awakened by a scream. I charged into the room. And was then struck down. And then... The next thing I, re I recall, I, I came to and I had a realization that I'd been struck and that something was wrong. I, I looked at my wife and I believe I checked her pulse. And I, f I felt that she was gone. I heard a noise downstairs. I saw a form running from the front door down to the lake. Shepard says he chases this mysterious killer. He loses his t-shirt in the struggle. I remember a choking or a twisting feeling. I this terminated my consciousness. I the next thing I knew, I had a groggy recollection of being at the water's edge on my face. stairs to the house. I felt disoriented or that I was the victim of a strange dream. The detectives now head back to the crime scene to look for evidence. They can find no murder weapon and there are other strange facts. Oh, absolutely no sign of a forced entry front or back. For the cops, Shepard's story of an unknown intruder doesn't make sense. Anything look like it's been moved? Somebody's a sportsman. Looks like our guy missed a few things, huh? Pretty tidy burglary. Yeah, or a pretty messy something else. 
There are other inconsistencies. The family dog didn't wake up. Neither did Sam Jr. The t-shirt Dr. Shepard was wearing is missing, and he called friends before the police. So, you just watched five minutes of a CSI docudrama containing actual footage plus dramatization based on recordings and interviews from witnesses, and you'll see a couple more minutes in a little while. But first, let me lay out some facts. Shortly before 6 a.m. on the 4th of July, in 1954, Spencer Hawk's phone starts ringing and wakes him up. I think they've killed Marilyn, Sam Shepard's voice tells him. Spencer Hawk is the mayor of Bay Village, the upscale suburb of Cleveland where both he and the Shepherds live. He's also a friend, but he's not the police. For some reason, Sam chooses to call his friend instead of the police. The mayor and his wife, Esther, rush over to the shepherd's home. They find Sam Shepard shirtless, wearing pants that are soaking wet. His face is cut and bruised. Esther goes upstairs to the bedroom and observes Marilyn's body lying on the bed, her pajama top rolled up around her neck, her face battered and bloody. At the same time, her husband's downstairs calling the Bay Village police and Sam Shepard's brother, Richard, who's also a doctor. Richard arrives first. He gives Marilyn's body a quick check and confirms the fact that she's dead. The Cleveland police, the coroner, and Sam Shepard's other brother, Steve, soon arrive at the scene. The two brothers examine Sam's injuries and whisk him out of the house. The brothers contend they're looking out for their injured brother's welfare, but another opinion claims that the brothers took Sam away to avoid interrogation from the police at the scene of the crime. However, the police did question Sam later that same day, and not once, but three times. Here's a recreation of one of those times. Dr. Shepard, we appreciate that you're talking to us. I know this is difficult, but we have some questions to ask you. Was there anything of value taken from your house? I don't know. I didn't have time to check. Well, you're sure there was an intruder, right? Well, yes, he did this to me. But so you phoned, I'm... wait, you phoned the neighbor first, not the police. It was the first number that came into my head. Was your wife ever unfaithful? No. Oh, God. What about you? Were there other women in your life? No. Dr. Shepard, you got to see this from our side. You get burgled, but nothing of value is taken. You struggle with this intruder, but there's no sign of a forced entry. A T-shirt you were wearing is gone. You don't know where. The dog never barked. Your son didn't wake up the whole time that your wife was being killed. Now, I don't know about my partner, but I think you killed your wife. An autopsy gives them their final proof. The coroner finds 35 wounds on Marilyn's body, including 15 fractures to her skull. Her battered hands indicate a massive struggle against her attacker. The coroner discovers that Marilyn was four months pregnant when she died. He concludes that the murder was an act of rage, not a sexual attack. The police are convinced that Dr. Sam Shepard killed his wife, not an unknown intruder. So, there you have it. The cops think Sam murdered his wife. And if I'm one of the cops, I'm thinking the same thing. But they did not arrest him that same night. In fact, they did not arrest him until 26 days later on July the 30th. Next time, we'll get into what happened during those 26 days. Now, here's a quick plug for Born to be Wild, my outlaw biker saga, true story, published 30 years ago and still selling, this story is an amalgam of Breaking Bad, Escape from Alcatraz, and the Sons of Anarchy. But these guys make the Sons look like Cub Scouts. So, thanks for stopping in today. Until next time. See you. And that's a wrap.